Hey everyone, welcome to the Watch and Listen podcast. This is a podcast all about watches. I'm your host, Matt Farah, and I do this little gig here with my friend Cameron Weiss, CEO of the Weiss Watch Company and a master watchmaker. This episode of the of the Watch and Listen podcast is brought to you by Crown & Caliber, the number one place to buy and sell secondhand luxury watches online. Did you know you could buy and sell secondhand luxury watches online? Only dumb people and ballers who can light dollar bills on fire buy new. I have bought three or four watches from Crown & Caliber, all used, all mint, good to go. Once you're wearing it, it doesn't matter if someone was wearing it before. Plus, people take way better cares of, care of watches and stuff than they do of cars. There's a lot less scary things to worry about. And besides, Crown & Caliber has a trained staff of technicians and, and, and staff to, uh, to maintain and fix and make sure that what you buy from Crown & Caliber is good as gold. Um, if you got a watch to trade in, maybe you want to trade up or trade out, check out Crown & Caliber's buy-sell section where you can trade into something you like a little better. Use code CAM150, that's C-A-M-150, to get $150 off your first watch at crownandcaliber.com. That's code CAM150, C-A-M-150, 150 bucks off from your friends at the Watch & Listen podcast at crownandcaliber.com. We're also sponsored by Beeline coffee. I drink it every morning. It's delicious. The Smoking Tire Roast 2.0, which is actually called the Roasted Tire. The Weiss Watch Company Roast are in the store now. Uh, they partnership, they partner with all the cool kids to make the good blends. I love the Smoking or the Roasted Tire. It is the best coffee I've ever drank. No shit, fools. It's delicious. Um, Code Chrono, C-H-R-O-N-O, code Chrono at the Beeline Coffee Store is good for 15% off anything in the store. Whether it's one bag of coffee or a full year's subscription, code Chrono for 15% off at Beeline Coffee. All right, uh, this episode of the Watch and Listen podcast covers an interesting topic. We are talking today about watches that are not from Switzerland. And when people think of a nice watch, typically they're thinking Switzerland. If you go to Switzerland, it's like watch heaven. There's just watch stores everywhere. Um, They're very proud of their watches, and rightly so. But that doesn't mean you have to go Swiss if you want a good watch. And Cameron and I have some good alternatives for you on this episode of Watch and Listen. Let's do it. Hello, fuckers. What's happening? Watch and Listen podcast. Welcome in. Uh, those of you who are checking out the video feed of our show, available on our YouTube channel, We'll probably notice Cameron and I are wearing the same clothes as last week, and that's because you're looking at now, sir. Yes. <laughs> Everything you're seeing now is happening now. Um, we are doing watches that ain't from Switzerland, asterisks, except for some of the watches and some of the parts that are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's an interesting topic because um, certain people are very passionate about watches only being from Switzerland, Uh, or the best watches only being from Switzerland. Other people are very passionate about the Swiss are snobs, and I don't want to wear a Swiss watch, and it's a badge of honor if something, uh, if a watch is better than the Swiss, more precise, better better machined, better finished, what have you, right? Yeah. What are your thoughts as an American watchmaker on watches from places besides Switzerland? Are you inspired to want to buy them or does it do anything for you at all yeah it in, it inspires me i actually i enjoy hearing from other people when they say uh one that i love is the best watches aren't made in switzerland you know some some inside guy who knows a lot and and thinks he's like i know a lot about watches yeah. and he'll tell me there's nicer watches being made in germany or nicer watches being made in japan i think That's a lot of people cool. i like that i think a lot of people have that um yeah. uh attitude i mean it's anecdotal, but yeah. the people that I know who the, the the I know some fabulously wealthy people who buy crazy fucking watches, right? And I know some other people that are not as wealthy but buy nice watches and invest smart and buy seem seem to always know where the market is going and what the market is doing. And a lot of those people wear fucking Seikos. 
um, and wear and wear Japanese watches or German watches um, because they are disillusioned with you know the fact that a, a, a Rolex Submariner, for example, is like a, a mass mass produced item, and at the price they're charging to have a, a Grand Seiko or to have a, a glass chute or something like that, uh, their argument is you're getting a nicer piece. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think it's a, to make the parallel with cars, um, you know, you can if you look at it in terms of performance, you know, you can shop a Carrera S, which is sort of a low to middle end 911, and at that price point, you're shopping it against a Corvette ZR1 or a Nissan GTR or a... Um, uh, let's see, let's see, uh, what, could, what could be from another country? Uh, <laughs> I think I made the point. Yeah. But, um, you know, you can definitely, there's value in looking outside of Switzerland for sure. Yeah, and the there's different interpretations of the, uh, the art form behind watchmaking. Like right, the Japanese decoration is very different than the Swiss decoration. Right, and the uh, Germans, yeah. and the Germans, the, and the as Germans, well. and the English. And actually, we have some watches here that I think. Now that I'm looking at them laid out on the table, I think when we line them up next to each other, it'll be pretty obvious what countries they come from. The, I think yeah. I think the watches that we have here, um, which will be available at Crown and Caliber starting next week, because we're sending them back, and they go for sale. And some of them are fire. <laughs> um, uh, now I'm just looking at a couple of them right now, and I could probably guess the country just based on the s- layout and color schemes of the dials. So, uh, this you know we're not it's not a history show. We're not organizing it uh, linearly by time. I thought we could organize it by uh, countries uh, that I, with the the most watchmakers I could find represented that weren't Switzerland. Yeah. Right by volume. Yeah. All right. So America. <laughs> we start with Weiss Watch Company, which you should follow on Instagram. Uh, they make watches from scratch right here in Torrance, California. Yeah. Ever heard of them? <laughs> Um, I, I know uh, I know a guy there. If you weren't you, Cameron, and you wanted to buy Merkin, where would you be looking? Um, if I wasn't me... If you weren't you. I would probably look to uh, Keaton Myrick. What's Ke- who, the Q- who is a Keaton Myrick? Keaton Myrick. Small... Uh, you, oh, Keaton Myrick is. Here's small Keaton operation. I, I know he does restoration. Does he do um, sort of the a, a, a pocket watch restoration type of deal? He does all kinds oh, of restoration. Fire. Oregon, huh? Yeah, but he also makes his own watches, um, and they're gorgeous. Really? Yeah, in Oregon. Uh, do you know this gentleman? I, I've never met him, no. I, I would a, love to see his workshop and, and I like uh, on this talk one, the, to him. The but, dial uh, had a real depth to it. Right. You know, beneath. What, what's this thing called here? Um, a rehote or something like that? So that would be, a, um, this is your, like, in index a uh, bezel or ring, uh, it, it's applied to the dial. Dude, these guys, this guy's watches are dope, right? Beautiful. I, I really like these. What do these things go for? Are they super expensive? I don't know the exact price. I have heard somewhere around thirty thousand eh, dollars. So they're not. That looks cheap. like a thirty thousand dollar watch. Yeah, but that's going to be white gold for thirty G's, right? That's not um, steel. I right? don't. I don't think so. Really? I think that would be steel. Wow. Yeah. There's a lot of work. It's pretty in, cool. In that. Yeah. Limited number three out of thirty. Huh? Yeah. He All makes right. very few a year. Handmade, wow, very cool, uh, and just cool. I would also uh, check out RGM. I uh, I like. I happen to think RGM is cool. They do new watches and pocket watch uh, watch movement type restorations. Um, I happen to think this this is my favorite watch they make. I, I may buy one of these. Uh, it's a it's a enamel dial um, with this these really beautiful uh, indices. Um, they're made in Pennsylvania. By uh, RGM Roland, is the guy's initials. Yeah, Roland G. Murphy. Yeah, um, and that that watch actually. So that uh, dial configuration came off the Corps of Engineer uh, pocket watches. Yeah, and those were made by Vacheron Constantin. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, how cool! I like it with a steel bracelet here. That looks really good. And then, I mean, just look at the the movement is very very pretty. Yeah. Um, this and what I really like about RGM is they have actual options uh, in their movements. Yeah, if you want to customize something, yeah. So it's look neat. here when you customize, you're not choosing a color. So here's there's you can have an optional hacking seconds, an optional wolf's tooth winding wheel, and there's an optional motor barrel system. Which now that I have your attention, Cameron, for seventeen hundred dollars, what is an optional motor barrel system? Uh, 
it's pretty complex. Um, <laughs> so basically, do you want one? Uh, if you're into that kind of thing, it's a historical complication that uh, keeps your your uh, your mainspring. If it snaps, uh-huh. it keeps it from destroying other parts of the watch. Oh. Um, was that a thing that people that worried about? That was a thing back mains- then, back in the rust. day, yeah. So the mainsprings were made of carbon steel uh-huh. that was heat-treated and tempered to be spring state, uh, and that would fatigue, and they would snap. And when they snap, hmm. you have a lot, of, uh, a lot of force running through the teeth of the wheels, and they would actually damage each other. So you'd break teeth off and things like that. And then it was a huge restoration process to go through the watch and bring it back to life and put a new mainspring in it. Neat. Now we have fancy alloys in the mainspring that don't snap, um, so it's not as big of a deal, but it's a really cool historical complication uh, that if you're into that kind of thing, it's neat to have it. Yeah. Um, I also uh, was checking out the uh, the Vortic watch company. These yeah. guys are kind of cool because they're actually taking actual pocket watch movements and restoring them, and then I think they're 3D printing uh, cases and then putting the movements in cases. Yeah, right? um, and I, I know the guys from Vortic. Uh, maybe if they're out in L.A., they could come by I would love something. to. I think I've, I've interacted with them on Instagram a couple of times. I don't know who I'm talking to, but yeah. somebody over there, I told them to definitely hit us up. I'd love to see their shit in person. Yeah. And look, here's a, I like this. Here's, they've got all their, all their major components here. Made in Los Angeles, made in Fort Collins, 3D printed in Fort Collins, 3D printed in Fort Collins. Um, oh, wow. Antique pocket watch movement, 3D printed in Fort Collins? What does that mean? Um, I, th- I think that must be a mistake. Okay. Because the, the movements they source, so they're vintage pocket watch Yeah, like movements. Elgin movements and yeah. shit. Yeah. Or I believe if you have a pocket watch that was maybe your grandfather's pocket watch, you oh, can they... send it into them. Mm-hmm. They will put it into a wristwatch case They'll save you the case, obviously, so if you ever want to restore right. it back to the way it was, um, but then you could actually wear it instead of have it sitting in a drawer. Yeah, so here's their basic models, like 1000 bucks, 1200 bucks. I I haven't ever seen one of these in person, but I've seen they look huge. Yeah, well, it is a, <laughs> it's a pocket watch. They have smaller ones now, I think, with yeah. the smaller pocket watch movements. Even for me, and I got big gorilla yeah. hands, because I, I actually, it's tempting. It's tempting to have something like that. It seems like a cool piece and a cool story. Um, but every time I've seen a picture of one on someone's hand, I go, oh, that's a, that's a big girl. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, let me just see if I, if I Google images. Let me see if I get a picture of one on someone's hand that just looks. And they've got, uh, so they were 3D printing. That was how they started with the cases, 3D printing them out yeah. of metal. And I believe now they have one with uh, a machined case. So it's a smoother finish instead of the antique-looking um, 3D printed finish. This, I mean, look, that is it's a, a big watch. Very cool-looking dial and a very neat, probably conversation piece. Definitely, but it's huge, and that doesn't even look like one of the bigger ones I've seen. That's just the nicest picture I could find. Yeah, and it all depends what uh, which pocket watch movement yeah. you're going for because yeah. they were all different sizes. How when you take, you know, one of those because those pocket watch movements. Are, were they designed to be worn on a wrist? Or do they need to be like real heavily modified to be worn on a wrist? They weren't designed for the wrist. Um, the The main problem is going to be the shock absorber on the balance wheel. Hmm. Uh, so now wristwatches will have uh, shock absorbers on the balance wheel to keep the balance uh, to keep the uh, the pivots on the wheel from snapping. If you have a shock, yeah, like you yeah, hit your watch yeah. on something, yeah, the pocket watches don't have that. They have fixed jewels, and sometimes you can break the the pivots on that uh, balance wheel. So you be kind of careful with it. Yeah, so you don't want to be like doing crazy sports or anything with it, or whacking uh-huh. it on doors. Uh, but like any other fine watch, you just be, be you, you do have and, to and sort of be careful with it. Yeah, yeah. I think I figured. But the it... parts are plentiful. If you were to break the balance, uh, mm. the balance, you're you're not going to have an issue getting it replaced. Yeah. All right, good to know. Uh, last one from for my American contribution is actually I think it's pronounced co- Cobold. Cobold. Uh, have you heard of these guys? You ever heard? I of these? have. I have. I. I What's I up? don't know. I I would stay away from talking about them. Oh, they have uh, some interesting stuff going on right now. Really? Um, Should we talk about that? That sounds uh, that sounds more interesting than whatever the hell else <laughs> yeah. I was going to talk about with these guys. I mean, What's I, up? I don't What's really. The deal? I don't know because it, it's all just like secondhand and stuff I've heard. What are they saying? Um, 
but it seems like they're not really operating anymore. Oh, um, okay, they're out of the, out of the show. Yeah. They go. Yeah. Okay. I mean, America, they, they may come back. You. I don't know. But, All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> That's fine. I I they, they, I mean, look, someone someone on Instagram suggested it. The website existed, so there it was. If you yeah. got a, if you and got I, a hey, story. I like the style of their watches. I I think. Uh, <laughs> They had some other issues that they got uh, they need to work out. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Are they hanging out with Elon Musk? Is that where, where we're at right now? It might be. Yeah. Oh boy. All right. Well, uh, you want to go to Germany or you want to go to Japan? Where you want to go? Um, let's uh, let's go to Japan first. Japan. Yeah. Okay. We can start. We can start with me. I'll show yeah. off my shit again. How many times do you want to look at my watch? Japanese, as you can imagine, at the highest end, which is pretty much where uh, this Grand Seiko. Uh, SBGB003 Spring Drive Chronograph. Um, this is about. Uh, I mean, the, Grand Seiko has some more expensive watches than this, but this is about as gnarly as Japanese uh, gets. Um, this is a sapphire bezel, and the Grand Seikos are um, fully handmade, hand finished uh, watches. The Spring Drive movement is the, as far as I know, the the most precise movement out there right now. Um, or at least, at the very least, it's a badass movement. Um, yeah. And just run that chronograph, would you, buddy? Oh, yeah. And because you got to watch the smooth sweep of the spring drive hand. Ah, it's so nice. This yeah. I love this watch so much. It's so nice. Um, and I love my other Seiko, too. My little gold turtle. Even though, uh, you know, I, I got a box full of nice watches, I actively have cravings to wear that Seiko turtle. Yeah. Doesn't it, it doesn't it, it doesn't need to be expensive or, or flashy or anything, but like I just look at it and I go, yeah, I want to wear that. I just there's a watch I really like wearing. Yep. Um, but the Grand Seikos, you know, especially stuff like the Snowflake, um, with the uh, have we talked about Snowflake? We are right. We have right. Let me get a picture of it. Um, because the Snowflake dial, it seems like all Grand Seiko is Grand Seikos is it's made in a separate factory from regular Seiko. It's like uh. Up on a mountain or on the yeah. side of a mountain with the the true artisans, right? Uh, yeah, and and so they their watches. Oh, I can never get a good enough picture of this. Where's a good? Let me go to uh, their artisans. Like are always inspired by like the snow, um, and they the snowflake. I love so much. Can you see over there? Which is the? Um, where's a good example, Cameron? Did you already click on this one? No, maybe? I haven't. Now is that the one? Mm. It's hard to see it's it hard in, to see in images, the texture. but in person it makes a lot of sense. Maybe this works, where the, the dial actually looks like just lightly like dusted, powder. fallen snow. Yeah. I have almost bought snowflakes so many times. And they, I've, I've seen a bunch of them in stores. I almost buy them, and then I, I put them on, and the whole watch is titanium because it's supposed to be as light yeah. as a snowflake. That's yeah. the idea. And I totally get it. If you're into light watches, this is your jam. But I, I need to I need to get the weight. So I bought this heavy ass tank steel yep. sapphire. Um, but this is this is like they're pushing that technology. They push the precision. I mean, even if you just look at this Grand Seiko, the hands are like exacto blades. They're just razored. And in case you're wondering, they polish the undersides of them as well. Someone put up this amazing picture on this on uh, Reddit watches. Yeah. Of the sun was hitting his snowflake the exact right way, and the undersides of his hands were reflecting wow. against the watch. It was so cool. Huh. Um, just the you know you throw one of these under a microscope and it's like mind blown. Yeah. Um, so and then you've got stuff like G Shock. Right. I love the G Shock. I didn't bring my gold today, but you know there's news on G Shock. Did you see this article I sent you? Uh yes, dude, we could be in trouble. So if this, do you think this is legit? Um, so it is legit. It is. However, I, I think it's more for uh for other, um other types of clock. I think G Shock is on GPS, right? I think G Shocks are on GPS. Is it not? So okay, so the the article we're talking about is someone sent me this literally this morning, and I sent it to Cameron, which is that apparently, <laughs> and and I'm just gonna try really hard to not shit on Donald Trump right now, but apparently there's some kind of budgetary cuts, presumably to give Jeff Bezos another tax cut, <laughs> and that uh, will uh, cancel the signal sent out by the P-51 
big atomic clock. So anything, any clock or watch that is synced to the atomic clock will cease to be synced to the atomic clock unless yeah. this like petition gets signed. Yeah, so if it's a radio frequency and there's a, a station that's sending out this radio frequency update, yeah, and your clocks that are like on the wall that say uh, atomic clock synced or whatever, those ones are actually receiving that radio signal and updating. A lot of those clocks that are in hotel rooms and things yeah. like that, the clock radios, they're they're tuned into that station and they get that update. But you. But we're not talking about G-Shock, which is GPS-based now. I believe G-Shock is GPS. Like, when I get off a plane in a different time zone, my, my G-Shock knows that. So yeah. that's going to be a GPS. Yeah, and Okay, GPS... what about, like, the, the Seiko Astron? Is it... Ast that's... Wait, Seiko has an Astron, so right? In, Isn't that it? Within GPS, Astron. there is... There are atomic clocks. So GPS is getting the time from their own atomic clocks okay. that are located is... on different satellites. Uh, by connecting to the GPS network, the Astron adjusts to your time zone. Okay, yeah. so that's not that's not going to be atomic. That's just straight um, GPS. Well, it's all atomic. GPS so is, it, so is based all, on atomic time. So are they but screwed? Not, not the same signal. Okay. So within the satellites, there are actually atomic clocks inside satellites. Uh huh. And they're sending out signals via GPS instead right. of radio frequency, like like they're doing out of Colorado, where they send out a radio frequency uh -huh. to to give out that atomic clock time. Uh huh. They have their own atomic clocks, so your cell phone is actually utilizing a different atomic clock coming through a GPS signal. The more accurate those atomic clocks become, the more accurate GPS and location device becomes. So they're actually using newer... Uh, it, it depends on the molecules that are being okay. broken down. It's so pretty the, crazy the, scientific The panic-inducing nature of this article is pretty much washing over what appears to be just an evolution in technology that will not affect modern things. Pretty much. Maybe in schools yeah. across the, the U.S. where they have like uh, an atomic clock-based uh, system that's 20 years old. Right, but, I'm, but the kind of stuff that we're thinking yeah. about, a modern, a modern watch yeah. that relies on GPS atomic signal will not be. Yeah, okay. it shouldn't affect you know, right. your, your time on your computer, your time okay. on your phone, shouldn't affect any of that. This is why your your G shocks. You. Yeah. Without you, I'd be in a in a panic yeah. right now that, and then that my brand new G Shock the, uh, wouldn't work anymore. Yeah. And anyone who's got that Swiss uh Swiss internet beat watch, that one. Oh you're still on time with the internet the time. Internet time is still <laughs> on time. Thank God. Oh, uh, what time is it? Uh seven hundred and twenty two. Yeah. <laughs> Can we do you want a dinner later at eight thirty four? Yeah, not eight thirty four p.m. at eight hundred and thirty four. And the fuck time is that? I don't know. <laughs> Shit. Um, so yeah, you've got Casio and, and G Shock, um, and we've talked about G Shock. They are they're utilitarian. They're tough. They're what, what should we look at in terms of G Shock? The crazy, the Mister G, the Master of G. Yeah, I mean. Look at this thing. Look at right? this bezel. Yeah, this <laughs> hammered... Uh, like what is happening? <laughs> bezel. It looks like one of those copper pans that's been like yeah. hand hammered. I think I think what they're doing is they're actually like dropping uh, dropping um, like beads onto that yeah. bezel from a certain height by hand, I, I believe. Wow. These things... G-Shocks are cool, man. They do everything. They're, if you want utility... They're, this is where I send anyone who says... I beat the shit out of stuff, and I want utility, but I still want to feel like a cool watch guy. Yeah, G Shock is a good place to go. And then uh, go to pull up AHCI. Is that a watch brand? Um, it's not a watch brand. What's AHCI? Um, it is a uh, an ac acronym and advanced in host French. controller interface. Nope. Uh, AH. Whoa. I guess apparently it's also something to do with computers. So AHCI yeah. Switzerland. Uh. <laughs> Uh, but uh, on here, you've actually got independent watchmakers. So uh, Academy Horlogier de, de Creators Independence. There you go. And uh, we can go to members here. So these are people who have been selected uh, to be part of this group who are independent watchmakers. Mm. And on here, you can see, look. Where are uh, you? Uh, Ahsoka Hajime. Uh -huh. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correct. But uh, I saw him at Basel World when I went uh, last year. And who's he? And he is a Japanese watchmaker. Just uh, by himself, his own by company? By himself, independent. Really? Um, so if you click through. Oh, he, can I, is he clickable? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. So this is a guy oh, who does wow, everything look at these by hand. Crazy. Yeah, things. he's making tourbillon cages. You can see his movement. 
It's really unbelievable. And he's in Tokyo, Japan. Beautiful. On his own, making these gorgeous watches. Look at that. That's um, rocking, man. Right? I like that a lot. Oh, this is a good... This is where we found home here. Yeah. Um, and then we've also got... Let's see. I, I think there's a... a there's, in China. There's a Chinese guy. What are you making, sir? What is that? Look at these. And it, they don't have to be watchmakers. Oh, they can be clockmakers clock as well. What is that's a clock? Yep. What is it doing? Right. Can you tell how? Oh, it's just. Is it just right here? There's the clock. Here's but the then clock. There's face actually going to be right. movement. This is a clock that looks like a carnival ride. <laughs> right. Table. It looks like it's like a Rube Goldberg device. Yeah, and you can see kind. you wind this up, and I don't know if it's some kind of Jack in the Box type. Yeah, uh, it's got to be. It's got to be. But unbelievable uh, mechanisms. You see with the dragon. These are super Rube Goldberg-y yeah. clocks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, these are cool, man. Yeah, so it's a cool thing to check out. I mean, if you're if you're interested in that, but totally, I'm gonna leave, the, leave that window up. He's a big deal for Japanese watchmaking. Um, and here's a very another, high level. Speaking of Japanese, a lot of people on the internet said check out Orient, and yes. I, these seem like sort of an entry level thing, ish, ish, entry level ish. Yeah, so Orient is uh, Seiko. Oh, really? Yes, they're owned by Seiko. Um, it is. A subsidiary or something? Yeah, I, d I don't know the exact structure. Um, what is it? Orient is like uh, less expensive. So yeah. it's not being made there. It's it's Asian, like Chinese parts, basically. Uh -huh. Chinese movements, all this, all this uh, less expensive, basically. So you can get these watches uh, for a lot less money, but... Well I mean, made? Made to relatively, Seiko? Yeah. Relatively, yeah. Relatively well made. made. Relatively Cheaper than well Seiko? Made. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. It depends on the watch, obviously. Right, but cheaper than like mechanical Seiko in yeah. general. Yeah. And I believe same ownership as Miyota. Oh, okay. Some of these are good. They, I, I've seen a couple of them I've seen have good designs. Um, I, I am a little turned off by their logo, which I think looks like a pack of cigarettes. Not the audience. <laughs> doesn't it? A little bit. Yeah. I think. Um, come on. But it's interesting for like, inexpensive cheap mechanical watches yeah um like these i don't like this they, i've seen a lot of these open heart kind of deals they do they're into yep. this which this is not a tourbillon no yeah see that's sort of like all right i'm under the same I, like <laughs> leave that for the tourbillon if yeah it's not a tourbillon don't do that that logo looks like cigarettes from the 1980s <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I, 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 a lot of people uh on my instagram post asking about it, it was it was brought up a lot yeah. Let's just say that. So oh, they have a huge following. They have a um, huge following. Because, again, they make a mechanical watch for a relatively low price. Yeah. And they have some really pretty cool models as well. Some of it is like, you know, it, it just looks like everything else. But there are some cool ones Yeah, I mean, um, the, design-wise. And I, I'm just not into that, quote, open that, heart thing yeah. unless you're looking at a tourbillon. That just, it just doesn't do it for me. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much um, the end of my Japanese uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, should we go to Germany? Yeah. Germany has a lot uh, of options. We've And we have... Uh, we, what do we got here from Germany? We got a bunch. Germany, we've got... Yeah, we got uh, a, we, they sent us a bunch. Oh, again, yeah. all these watches will be at Crown and Caliber oh, we by next week. We've got Those some sweet German stuff. Right here. We've got Sin, Nomos, a Long, Damasco, Glashut, Junghans. Isn't Junkers also German? I didn't write that uh, down before. Junk, that one I don't Junkers. know. Junkers. Uh, and then Stoa. Uh, is a uh, German as well. So let's start with some watches There's that a, we have here, and then we can go to the web. There is a huge amount of micro brands out of Germany, and yeah. a lot of the even a lot of other brands from elsewhere that are considered micro brands will actually use German parts. Um, German parts are less expensive. They have different requirements on what's German made. Oh, it's uh, the opposite, also, of, opposite of cars. Yeah, and in production ca in cars, Germany is yeah, less you, expensive. Yeah, and cars, if you want something to work in Germany, it costs a fucking fortune. Yeah. Yeah. But we start. are we starting with some fire here? Some chum on fire? Um, it's a yeah, glass let's shoot. Start with this, yeah. Glass shoot from Germany. What's up with this thing? Um, it's beautiful, by the way. Yeah. Gorgeous watches. I mean, it, it's in. it looks... Uh, Put the Lang next to it because we have. Oh, it's not the right Lang. We like it looks like some of the Langs, the bi yeah. like a Lang big date. Well, and that's because of the region that they're from. Tell they're me, they're both from Glashütte, and that's going to be an actual. So this is a style from 
this region? Yeah, they have their own uh, practices and decoration, hmm. their own unique styles. So you'll see on these particular watches. Um, let me throw the Lang under there real quick. Yeah. I want to be real careful because this is a platinum. Because the Lang is expensive. Platinum Lang. Mm. Um, so you so can that see. Lang is like the pinnacle of what you're doing with your watch. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is the pinnacle for sure. Yeah. So if you look at the back here, um, you see the decoration with the, the gold chatons and the, the blued screws around them where the jewels are. Yeah. That's going to be these pieces right here where you've got these jewels and the three blued screws. You've also got your swan neck regulator. You've got a balance cock here, which is basically this little bridge that holds your balance wheel, which is hand engraved. Um, German silver bridges. And now... If now the glass chute. This one, you're going to have similar styles of decoration. You can see that. You can see it's not every. It's not as vibrant, but I actually yeah. think the design of that back is pretty cool. I like that winding rotor that's yeah. sort of carved out with the G's. Yep. Like, that's pretty dope. I like that they haven't covered the whole back with a rotor that you can yeah. see. You know, a third of it is just kind of open. What do you see under there? Um, so you can see that signature for the region. The hand engraved balance cock here, and theirs is actually it's got two wings. It's a, a true bridge, but hand engraved, and that's a big thing for them with decoration. They want one engraver to hand engrave each one. Yeah, and people often talk about how they took their watch to the factory and they hand it around the engraving room, and someone will come forward and say, "Oh, that's my engraving. I engraved that," because each one is unique. Each person's style of engraving and the cut they make, since it's so done by hand, is unique. So it's kind of like a signature of the the engraver. That's cool. Yeah, but I mean, I you know, if you look at the uh, like the long uh, like the big date and stuff, the dial layouts being yeah. sort of unevenly distributed, almost yeah, uh, is a it, it's a it's across both styles for sure. Yeah, local to the region. Yeah. What's did you recall the price difference between the glass shoot and the glass? Is it glass shooter? Uh, I believe it's Glashuta. Glashuta? I apologize yeah. if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Is this what it is right here? Is that what we have? Panamatic Lunar? Is that what we have? The What is ours? Is there a moon phase on that? Panamatic yep. Lunar? Panamatic Lunar. So the Panamatic Lunar right here. Details. Do we have prices on this thing? Mm. I don't know. There's the movement. Uh, oh, how about, I sh how about I actually share that? Um, it's a beautiful watch, man. I like that Glashuta. Do we have yeah. another Glashuta as well? We do. Where's the we other have one? another one. The other one I was like... Uh, this one is a little more like IWC-esque on the Dude, that one, the other one we have, I kind of am like, ooh, maybe I'll take this for a demo this month because it's big. It's a little Let's bigger, see. so it look... I like this one a lot. I love the big date right in the middle um, with the sub-dials on the side. Something about this... What color is that dial, Cam? It's like a anthracite gray. Anthracite right? gray with black hands. They're it's, actually... Are they black? Are they not They're actually black? silver hands. Oh, really? But it, what happens oh, is sometimes they reflect light and sometimes they reflect no light. Kind of like that flat yeah. uh, black polish is what Wait, they call it. Wait, move it around because when they some cuz so actually goes silver? Yeah, it looks completely different right? when it reflects it silver <laughs> and then sometimes it reflects black. Cool. Yeah. That's that's awesome. How big is that a 40 you think? 41 maybe? No, that's going to be probably a 42. Big enough. It's a good size watch. I'm gonna have to hang on to that. And oh, it's nice got the cool rotor movement. Yeah. Who make, does Glashuta make their own movements? Yes, they do. They do. Yeah. How nice. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so another. If like, you want to buy this? You have to movement. wait a little extra two weeks because I might <laughs> keep this one today. It's pretty sweet. I really like the designs. It's very. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's. I mean, it would take a very very. Strong very eagle eye to see the difference between that and a longa on someone's wrist walking by on the street. Yeah, it's similar styles. Yeah. Um they'll be a little less expensive. I they are they're quite a bit less expensive, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, I mean it, this it, watch it is depends like, on the model, but this these thing ones, is like you, yeah. under ten grand, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas the the longa will be like twenty grand minimum, I, yeah. I think for a simple one. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. That's great. I like the Germans are cool, man. The Germans have got a lot of good stuff happening. Yeah. I'm going to put this on. I want to I try this. What else do we have from Germany? We've got What's some that? Nomos. Tell me about Nomos. Rachel from Crown and Caliber was like, I can't wait for you to see the Nomos. I've never like 
really given them a lot of thought before. But another brand that when I posted up on Instagram asking for non-Swiss, a lot of Nomos recommendations. Yeah. And again, Nomos is a, a cool company. They are um, they're known for keeping their watches in the lower price points, which is really cool. So they can make more of them, scale up the company, and actually produce pretty nice movements now. Uh, and still at reasonable prices. I like the world time. Right, world and time is cool. Is that a, is a, a true world time? If you is it you press the button and it skips. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Oh, you that's good. Jump. Yeah, yep. Jump hour. Right. Is that that's not what that's called. What's just, uh, that's not, just not called jump mode. hour. It's just, it's called, just advancing, um, and you can see the hour hand advances along with the disc showing you uh, with the red over here. It tells you what time zone you're in based on the actual city. Oh uh, yeah, cool. Really cool, right? I like that. What do but, these things go for? Uh, do you? Because you got the box this time. You didn't get the thing. Huh? It ranges. I I didn't get the the sheet that was in the, the box. Hold on. Oh boy. I I'll tell you what. I, I want do have it. it in my email if you wanna. Yeah, find it for a second. Yeah. I like the back. The back of this Nomos. I think it's what's interesting is the front. Although the it is a world time complication, it's not super fancy. They keep it. Keep it fairly plain, but the back has really nice decoration. It's like machine turned uh, bridges and a pretty fun looking rotor. Let me flip this other. Do you have a display back too? Uh, no, the other one is is simple, uh, but so you'll have pretty different price points. Let's I can imagine. Pull that yeah. up. I'm gonna get some. I'm gonna get some Nomos. I want to see on their website. So that laying we've got here, mm -hmm. that was a uh, sixteen five hundred. Nice. And the uh, glass shoot. Uh, is going to be seventy five hundred. So okay, well, and, that, and the glass has yeah. has a big date. That's a very yeah. as far as long langs go. That's a pretty s simple lang. It's like a time only yeah. compared to like a big big date moon phase. So right? on these ones, the Nomos Club, yeah, the uh, the time only one, uh -huh. fifteen hundred bucks. Fifteen hundred for the time yeah. only, and what about for the, the world, world timer? timer? Is going to be forty seven hundred. Forty seven hundred for a world time is pretty strong. Yeah, automatic world good. time in house movement. Pretty good. Pretty solid. Pretty good. Yeah. And something cool on this, I don't know if how well you can see it if you're watching the video, but I've always said the reason we don't make an automatic is because of the reversing wheels. <laughs> At least an automatic in our that we manufacture uh -huh. the movement. The reversing wheel in this guy, it jumps back and forth. It's on a oh, wow, another wheel right like a here. Ball bearing. Hang it's on, like a hold wobbly it still. pinion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in. Hold on. It's right there. Okay. So you see that pinion yeah, kind of like wobbling wobbles. back and forth? Yeah. So if you really move it, it's like bouncing back and forth. It looks kind of wonky. It's really cool to Is, watch it go. Yeah. I've never seen anything like right? that. So, yeah, it's their, it's their own design that they created. Oh, that's neat. Um, the German engineering in these movements is unbelievable. They've made them in such a way that they can make an in-house automatic movement with a function like the world time for $4,700. Like, it's pretty cool, and you yeah. know what? And it's not, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't notice it before, but it's not particularly thick either. It's like a pretty. No. It's not. What do, what do we have to compare to for, uh, for thickness? Like, let's, uh, let's throw in this manual wind lang. Yeah. Right. Like, let's put these right here. Yeah, like not that. Maybe like a millimeter and a half, two millimeters right? thicker for a world time is pretty good. Yeah, compared to a manual wind. Yeah. With time no, only. Yeah, time only. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good job, Nomos. Yeah. I think I think we got. Do, is that is that our only two Nomos? Nomai. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are our, our Nomai. Yo, do you know? Um, do you know about uh, Damasco? Have you ever checked them out? I've heard of them, and I've seen some of their watches. I don't know much about them though. So I never heard of them at all. Um, but and I and I they don't fully make their own uh, movements. I'm just sorry there's a delay of game pulling up their website, but they did have uh, a pretty neat wait, uh, chronograph this thing. Chronograph they they have their own movement sort of. Um, and I'm trying to pull it up because it is based on a 7750, but they have sort of redefined how a chrono mm. should display the time. Yeah. So I think Without the sub dials Without, through it's, the center. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a it's a sub dialless chronograph. Yeah, which I think is sort of interesting, and it's a twenty seven hundred euro, so it's not crazy expensive. No, um, I don't know. What do you think? I I 
I like the micro brands coming out of Germany. I think they're good value. They're unique. Um, they're fun. You know, they're more fun than a lot of the the big brands. Yeah. Um, the guys like Damasco and Sin. And th- these ones are uh, they're interesting. I like the this one. Is, it, it's really got Damasco to me. Almost sounds like like cookware. Like uh, yeah, a little it, bit. Yeah. Is that because there's is there a Damascus? Cookware. Uh, Damascus is going to be the the steel, the folded steel. Yeah, the steel. Oh, so yeah, yeah you'll have what. knives that are going to be Damascus yeah. steel. So you know, here's some other. Uh, just maybe zoom in there. Some other options for you know, sort of pilot style watches, bold, you know, faces, and then they've got kind of the field style watch as well. Fairly fairly straightforward. This one's got a day date, twenty for twelve hundred euro. Yeah. Yep. Central seconds and a day date for twelve hundred. Okay. I fuck with you. <laughs> I fuck with you. That was Damasco. What else, uh, do you like? Do you like Young Hans? What else do you like? Yeah, I think uh, as far as Bauhaus watches go, they are they are the one. Um, didn't they do the curved hands? Was that them? Yes. Yeah, they I do like... curved hands with a curved crystal um, and a curved dial. Which thin what's watch. what's the good one to show here? What do you think? The, the, max, the max. The max bill, bill is yeah. the that's the real one, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. this one is the. It's very. Um, Bauhaus is the word. Yeah. You said it. Yeah, Bauhaus, it is the yeah. Bauhaus watch. <laughs> yeah. These things are, they're, they're not for me, but I could totally understand the kind of person who would wear this. Right. I like the table clock. Yeah. Oh, the table clock is cool. I would fuck with the table clock. I would fuck with a wall clock, actually. <laughs> a wall clock would be super sweet. Yeah. This, w- this is like the most German thing that it could be. Like, this is efficient. We do not need the extra. We don't need <laughs> right. to put the numbers there. You know what the numbers are. You have been looking at clocks your whole life. Yeah. Um, and it's, again, like, just because it's German doesn't necessarily mean that, like, all the parts are made in Germany or anything like that. It's just these companies are German companies. Some of them use Swiss parts and German parts or Chinese parts or, or whatever, but uh, they're German companies. The uh, the last one that got a lot of love, and I, I don't th- we don't have any in person, I'm sorry, uh, that got a lot of love on my Instagram was Sin. They uh, they make sort of pilot style uh, watches, uh, you know, very sort of somewhat entry level, not too expensive, uh, like less than two grand, I think, less than three grand for the most part. Um, but you know, I see them on like Reddit a lot, a lot, especially like the the pilot style stuff, as sort of like got my first you know automatic watch. Um, they use they definitely use the same font as Bell and Ross. Well, Bell and Ross was actually uh, they were having their watches made by Sin. Oh no! When way. they started, and oh, a lot of the designs came from Sin. Oh, well, that certainly explains why. So there's why. a reason for that crossover. Kind of yeah. like uh, when we had the Breitling episode, and we were talking about uh, the Breitling. <laughs> like, so here's the Sin, yeah, the exactly. Sin Breitling. Yeah. They when Breitling was closing, Sin bought the rights to the Navitimer. Yeah. So they were able to produce it. Which um, they still are, I yeah. guess, right? And what was it? Olek and Olek and Weiss. Mm-hmm. Uh, they bought all the parts, so they were also making one at the same time that looked like the Navitimer. I've heard good things about these watches. I yeah. don't. I don't. Su- super sturdy tool watches. Yeah. Um, like they do that tegmented steel. What's uh, tegmented steel? It's like Never hardened steel. Like you see these T two. Is that what this? Oh, T two is yeah. tege- tegmented steel for the cases I, and it has something Bezel to do with, with tegment technology and therefore especially scratch resistant yeah Wait, I, there's a link for tegment yeah what it's surface okay tegment technology raises the hardness level of the base material by a significant factor introduced in the 756 duo chronograph in 2003 uh-huh used on stainless steel cases and now use all materials with a hardened surface huh so they're basically like hardening the outside surface of yeah. the metal. How about that? Uh, instead of the whole thing, because if you harden the whole thing, it becomes brittle. Right. Um, it's it's kind of like knife blades. There are some knife blades where they want a very hard mm-hmm. edge, but then above the blade, it needs to be soft. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. But tool watches, they're really known for their tool watches. They're nice. I def- Diving I think, and pilot watches and stuff like that. I like, like the that. Bell and Ross version better, <laughs> but... <laughs> I almost I almost bought a Bell and Ross, but it was a little too much money. I'm gonna wait to find it used because it, yeah. it was it was too much money because it was brand new. Yeah, I I can't bring myself to to buy a new one. But they had one uh, in uh, in England. It was a it was a square one, and it, it was a brass case. Oh, so nice, it was awesome. Was it a diver? 
Did it have the rotating bezel? It had a rotating bezel yeah. and a brass case. I have case. seen that watch. It was that is... badass. Yeah. But it was $4,000 new, and I was like, mm, no. Yeah. So I told them to put a put a hold on any that come in <laughs> used. Um, right. So that's... Uh, there's also Stoa in Germany. Oh, yeah. Stoa yeah. is a nice, uh, neat little brand. Yeah. What do you know about Stoa? Um, I... I Similar, they have they have their pilot watches. They yeah. have their marine watch. Um, simple designs like you'd expect out of Germany. Low prices, like look, eight hundred uh, eight hundred euro, euro for the the Fliegler. That's yeah. sort of the, the the one is the Fliegler style, which I guess the is pilot, the, the yeah. pilot watch. Yeah. Listen, as a Jew, I don't <laughs> think buying a German pilot watch is for me. Yeah, you know it might I mean? be. Uh, yeah, it's even it's even pushing it with a Swiss one. They've got my gold over there. Yeah, but uh, but I can understand if you are. Not a Jew, and you want to feel like Baron von whoever the fuck. <laughs> I get it, but I like the blue hands on the against the black dial. I think that's really pretty. Yeah, it's again, a good, it's a lot of watch for the money because you're not really paying for like a name a name brand. Mm. Um, Forty, and they come in all different sizes. Yeah, lots of different sizes. I like this. I like the the gray. Yeah, Icarus. That's a good color scheme. Gray with white numbers outlined in black. Yeah. That's a good color scheme, right? Like the that. hands along that dial, yeah, real nice. Yeah. Oh again, wow, they really really print all the info on yeah, the automatic yeah. winding rotor, huh? And it, it, a lot of these Swiss movements, um, but you're gonna have like German made mm. uh, case materials and stuff like that, uh, or they could be made elsewhere and, and assembled and all that in Germany. Right. Um, how about some some random countries? Like, you ever go to Iceland? Uh, I've never been. I, I have heard there is a tiny watch shop there, though. Yeah, there's. Uh, I went there, and uh, it's it's one store. It's one dude, and they have really funny pictures they take. JS Watch Company, and here's here's the old man. Yeah, uh, I met him in his shop, um, and he uh, he takes these really these really funny kind of artsy, almost kind of Wes Anderson-y uh, <laughs> pictures. Uh, where he stages these these scenes, it's really really funny. Um, and if you go in there, like look, it's like they're ama- they're really really fun. Uh, it's like old school flying uh, scenes. And um, he makes these watches. They're they're at a base. He does not make movements. Um, but he's like obsessed with the celebrities that have bought his watches. So you go in his shop and there's just pictures of all the celebrities <laughs> wearing the watches. But um, some of these are really really nice. They're very pretty. This one um, I looked at. This has a volcanic a volcanic dust uh, dial uh-huh. on it, and it's got an engraved case. But it's thirty thousand dollars. Wow! Y- yeah. Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> you know, and even there, it, look, his movement is like it's nicely finished, and it's yeah. not. It's a nice piece, you know. If you were super super rich and going to Iceland and wanted a really fun souvenir which it seems like that's what all these celebrities do when they go film shit in Iceland. They go and buy, buy something from this dude. Um, but even their entry-level pieces were like four to $5,000, and I was yeah. just like, I'm, you know. <laughs> you know, not for something you have to explain what, what it is. But if, you, if you're going to Iceland, it's right in Reykjavik. It's right in the main shopping enter, en- center, and definitely go visit, uh, visit that guy. How about this one? Someone sent me this one, Gerlach watches, which are from Poland. Interesting. You know, I didn't know about these Gerlach watches. I think it's Gerlach. Ger- Gerlach. Yeah. Um, but nice designs. Uh, the cases, to me, sort of resemble different, like, there's one that's kind of like a Panerai-ish case. There's one that's sort of like a Zen- Zenith pilot case. Um but I don't know. I have never seen one in person, but in pictures they look interesting. Yeah, yeah, they definitely have some cool uh, like inspiration from some different watches. Nice uh, from Poland. Yeah, I don't even. <laughs> and honestly, I recommend flying Lot, the Polish airlines. Uh, I don't know what uh, 1950 PL, and I don't know what the translation is for that. That's kind of cool with the green hands on yeah. the black dial. Right. Nice. Right. Yeah. Wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna look up real quick in a side window what 150 PLN to USD is. That how much is that? Forty one dollars. That can't be right. <laughs> Maybe just for the strap. For the strap. Nineteen fifty. Oh, what did I put? Nineteen fifty. What did I put? You put oh. one fifty. Oh, You're missing I'm sorry. a nine. Or yeah, 
There we go. 1950. Oh, 533 so bucks. So still like a very reasonable watch. Yeah. From a micro brand out of uh, Poland. It, can you see if it says quartz or it says anything about a movement in Polish? Uh, Sorry, I just scrolled off. It says off. something on the dial. Um, twenty. Maybe that says 24 joules. Oh, does it? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> what. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, well, here we go. Siegel ST1902. Which, so it is a mechanical Chinese movement. Okay. Yeah. Oh, for 500 bucks? Yep. Support your local Polish watchmaker. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, unique story. Yeah. If you're um, into collecting some odd, oddball stuff. Oh, how about let's jump over to uh, the UK because we've yeah. got two Bremonts yes. with, in studio with us. Uh, Bremont uses some Swiss parts, though. Am I right? It's oh, a, yeah, yeah. It's an English brand, English yeah. designs. And depending on the watch, I believe some of them are going to be assembled in Britain. Some of them will be completed in in Swiss factories. And, yeah. But, uh, I mean, a British company, and they are making parts in Britain. Yeah, we talked about, uh, on the uh, uh, recent episode, we talked about their ejection seat watch, which is the yeah. MB2 or something like that. Yeah. Um, this one is, what's this one called? The super This is the Supermarine. Supermarine. So this is their 2,000-meter uh, water-resistance dive watch. 2,000 meters. Yeah, it's a, it's a serious like The human dive body watch. is crushed at, <laughs> I mean, honestly, <laughs> yeah. there's no possible way that a human could dive past like 300 meters. You would perish even if you were wearing <laughs> the plastic Swatch watch right. that looked like jelly flip-flops. <laughs> yeah. That one had 200-meter water resistance. That's yeah. more than enough. This is, I actually when I pulled this one out of the box, I, I like the look of it. It's pretty it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's real thick and chunky and it's pretty heavy. Yeah. Um and uh what is how how does the single button crown work? Is there uh, so the it's just do? a it's just a screw down crown. Oh, okay. Oh, that's yeah. weird. The the button it looked it, like it yeah. had a button on the end of it. Exactly. It, it looks it, like a button, but, but it's not, not actually a button. A button. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Um do you did you have on your let me see that thing. Did you have in your phone how much this thing costs? Uh, let's pull it up. It's got a I really should, good yeah. weight. I'm going to put it on. Yeah, it's a super nice dive watch. Yeah. It's got a long long rubber strap. The Supermarine 3250. Yeah. 3250. It looks I think it look, looks good. The big 8 inch wrist. Looks nice. It feels nice. It's got a very ooh, it's got a really satisfying like listen to that. Yeah, nice bezel. Real good like metal on metal kind yeah. of sound. Yeah. And I think that's a sapphire uh um bezel insert as well. Is it? Let me it's take a, a look. Sapphire bezel insert? I think so. Huh. And then we where's the other Bremont? We had two, didn't we? Yep. Did you give us two? One. Yeah, and then we've got the, the chronograph. Yeah, that is a sapphire oh, uh, that's cool. insert, so it won't scratch. And then we have here's the Bremont chronograph. Yep. I, this one to me feels very English. Yeah. Just look, I just right? I, I get an it's English. The British spot. British uh, racing green, right? Right? Yeah. Like I think what we gotta do is we gotta put that next to here, England next to Germany. Okay. And then next to <laughs> the next to this this crazy here's a crazy Italy. Oh yeah, let's throw some <laughs> Italian in there. Whoa, definitely Italian. We there. got they sent us this this is, is it Bulgari or Bulgari? Bulgari. I say Bulgari. Yeah. And I like the Bulgari octo stuff, the new really thin octo stuff. But this what this, this thing is <laughs> that they sent us is so ridiculous. Um, it is you, an odd contouring like shape. It goes with a silk shirt uh, that only has one button buttoned, uh, a pair of like orange alligator loafers, you know, yeah. and a and a and a Colombian prostitute <laughs> with uh, you know with huge tits. It's not that is not an attractive watch. I suspect Crown and Caliber will, will be stuck with that for a very long time. <laughs> I, mean, I guarantee there's a person out there that is looking is for this, this exact going, watch. That's I my bet. watch. That's that, fire. That, that's <laughs> it. It totally is. Yep. We make good price for you, my friend. <laughs> someone, If someone out there is looking at this Bulgari thing going, yep, please call me. Explain it all. <laughs> but I think I think these watches really do. It's amazing how much they like show their country. I yeah. Think. Panor- we have a, they sent Panerai. us a Panerai, which is half Italian, half Swiss, right? Italian well, I mean, company. Panerai is um, what are they? They're they're in Milan, right? Yeah, yeah. They're, so it's, they're they, Italian. The company is Italian. However, all the production is in Switzerland. Uh, it's a Swiss-made watch, as it states on the dial. Um, but still, it's the design is Italian. Yeah, uh, and I'm sure they're run 
<laughs> they're run like, they're an, run Italian like an Italian brand. At least yeah. at that office. In the Swiss office, it's not that way. The uh, the sandwich dial, I love. That's my yes. favorite thing about all Panerai's yeah. is the sandwich dial where you can... It's a really dimensional dial. Like yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's a layer above a layer. And check this one out. Micro rotor in house movement. Really pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. I didn't realize nice they were doing back. The, those micro rotor movements yeah. now. Yeah, and they have a, a unique decoration as well uh, for Panerai. You see how it's like uh, you have your striping, which is just a straight grain satin on the bridges. So you don't have like the big uh, Costa Geneva, um, the Geneva striping, things like that. Mm. It's a really like utilitarian finishing that's simple but very nice and well executed. Um, I like it, man. That's cool. Right? That's cool. It's a good watch. Radio mirror. I prefer the, um, the, one, the, the uh, what do you call it? Uh, Luminar with oh, the, yeah, with the Luminar. guard thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're known for that. So, them's some watches from not Switzerland. That's yeah. a bunch. There's a, and there's a lot more. There's I mean, a lot more. Let's do one quick shot of AHCI. Okay. Um, let's pick, uh, let's you, do this guy. Here? So, you got PETA. Where's Remember, PETA? we've here? talked about him before. Remind me, That's who, Pete, be remind me who PETA is from Spain. Yes, from Barcelona. Oh, he's got some weird looking yep. stuff. He's Look got at that. some oddball things, some cool, unique designs. He recently came out with uh, a new version of this watch, which is pretty cool. It's got that super black dial, um, kind of like a mystery look. That thing, that is that's like a Vanta black almost. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Neat. Okay. But he's got some cool stuff out of uh, Barcelona. You've I like my guy uh, here from Russia, Chaikin. Constantine yes. Chaikin. Yeah, that's a good one. I like this guy. We've talked about his wonky-ass <laughs> clown watch. One day I'm going to have one of these weird clown watches. I like them. Yeah. But he just... Everything he makes is kind of weird. This one is so cool. Have you seen this? The cinema oh, watch? Oh, yes. And Dude, the horse it, is running, The right? horse runs. Yeah. It's so cool. It's got like a... What is Cinemascope? I believe it's uh, called. Yeah. The and moving it, picture. Yeah. Moving picture in the back of it. And they just... He figures out some really weird... Uh, looks like post-apocalyptic kind of designs. Right. I like him. Yeah. What, who else you got on this guy? Uh, let's go to... Um, do, do. This guy. Uh, I Aaron think his name Bex- is Bexy. Bexy? Is how you pronounce it, I think. Aaron And he is... Bexy. Hungry. From Hungary. Hungary. Look at this thing. Right? Wow, Look at the complexities intense. in that watch. There's, There's a lot of complications yeah. happening there. Yeah. That, and that's a clock, actually. But oh, yeah. he, he makes all kinds of uh, all kinds of things. Very unique cool. design. Yeah. I like him. That's, right? a, that's a winner. He's from Hungary? Yeah. Budapest. Okay. Any other? Um, let's do... Uh, let's see. Where else? This guy's from China. Speak Marin is, uh, he is from the UK. He has, he had a company, uh-huh. um, no Peter Speak Marin. Mm-hmm. He since sold it, uh, but they were another company that was a British company, but everything was done in Switzerland. And then, of course, Roger Smith. Yeah, Roger what Smith. How do we forget Roger I Smith? Know, right? Right? Right. Well, because we don't have one in front of us. Because we don't have one here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, have to, uh, I have to call the game on this here episode of Watch and Listen. I'm sorry, because we have, I literally have a guest standing outside for the Smoking Tire podcast right now. <laughs> podcast on podcast on podcast on podcast. But we've covered all watches in our presence. Yeah. And all of them, except for the glass shoot that I'm 100% hanging on to for this <laughs> week, uh, are going to be for sale at Crown and Caliber. Um, Next week, when Cameron sends his box back. Um, and actually, by the time this podcast goes live, they'll be up. Uh, but, of course, let's just take it back to the best uh, independent Weiss watch company out there. I, I closed the tab. Yeah, I needed the tab for something else. The tab is gone. No. Follow them on Instagram, Weiss Watch Company. Buy a watch from them, folks. Buy a watch from them. It's made in America. Right. Yeah. Sell it, Cameron. Damn. Made in America. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're one, of the, uh, one of the new guys, but... Uh... Something very interesting happening in, in the U.S. as far as watchmaking goes. How long until you get on this AHCI shit? I don't know. I have to, I have to research. Do I you think have to s- apply? Somebody probably has to, uh, has like to select me really? or recommend me or something like that. Hmm. All we'll right. see. All right. Yeah. We'll f- we're going we're gonna, to gonna research strings. that and come back. Yeah. All right, folks. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. See you next Wednesday on the Watch and Listen podcast. Goodbye.